Uh, so in this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to make uh, kind of composite drawings, uh, perspective section, uh, and for this I'm going to be using this Barcelona Pavilion model that I had made a few years back. If you want to follow along and use the exact same model, you can get it at ckmca.com slash barcelonapavilion.zip. The link's also going to be in the video description. So with that, um, there's just a couple things to keep in mind. Uh, when you do a perspective section, there are times where you can have it to scale. Like if we took an elevation essentially and cut through it, um, we could create a scaled drawing. Um, the things in perspective, the things in the distance of the section would not be to scale. Um, and that's how perspective works. There are certain types of three-dimensional drawings, axonometrics and isometrics, that are true to scale. Um, but we're not going to be looking at those today. Uh, what we're going to be doing is using perspective and here I'm in a perspective view, um, you can change this to parallel, which you can see now we're kind of much more like in the axonometric world, or into two-point perspective, which uh, keeps all of the verticals uh, up and down. If we go to just normal perspective, you can see sometimes, um, if we can get it, the verticals flare out, which we don't get in two-point. These are always going to be straight up and down. Um, so one thing to know is that V-Ray will not render two-point perspective. It will only render perspective. So with that, um, the first thing we're going to do is make a clipping plane. And I'm going to make a vertical clipping plane and just drag that through my model this way. I want to make sure that my clipping plane is larger than my model, and that's very important. And I'm just using this to see where I might want to cut my section. So. You know, I could go this way. If I really wanted to, I could, I'm using the gumball tool here. If I wanted to, I could rotate uh, and do a perspective section that is something like this. I, I'm going to keep mine uh, square to the building, and let's say I'm going to do something uh, right here. The clipping plane is just a reference for me. It's what's going to allow me to draw uh, an actual plane that I'll use to split my geometry. When we make the drawings, the clipping plane can um, allow us to make 2D drawings, but V-Ray won't actually render. And I know that I want a V-Ray rendering as part of my composite drawing. So with that, I'm going to make a new layer and call this plane. Uh, I'll set my layer color to red so it's easy to identify, and I'll make this an active layer by just clicking. Now I'll type plane, and I'll say that I want a vertical plane. And I can snap to the corners of my clipping plane, so I know that if I go here and here, my plane and my clipping plane are the exact same spot. So now, now that I've decided that this is where it's going to be, I can delete my clipping plane. And you can see I have a plane that runs right through the middle of my model. So here I'm going to come to the side and I'm going to take everything except the clipping plane. I can also do that by hitting Control A to select all and then hitting Control and clicking my plane. Now I just have my model selected. I'm going to use the command split and then I'll click my plane to say this is my cutting object. And you can see it's going through and says often it says split failed. Well, this plane is trying to cut all this geometry and sometimes that geometry doesn't even touch the plane so the split won't work. But it will work where the geometry does touch the plane. So now it's done and I know this because I can click and I've got a wall here and a wall there. It's split in half. I'm going to come to my top view and that's an important distinction that if we if we drag click and drag from right to left you get a bounding box that selects anything it touches where if you drag from left to right you get a bounding box that selects only what's contained in it so I'm gonna draw a box just above my plane and then I'm gonna hit control again and click my plane to deselect it and I have this group of um, objects that I'm gonna have hidden in my section So I'm gonna type group and now this is one thing that I can click and everything comes at once. I'm going to make a new layer and call this front group. Activate that layer. I'll click my object. I'll right click that layer and say change object layer. So now this is on the front group layer. So if I activate plane again, I can toggle on and off my front group. Uh, I can actually set you know, some other layer active and then turn off my plane as well. All right, the next step is to pick a view of that section, a perspectival view. So I'm going to do a view something like this where I can see a little bit of the top of the model. 
You can see my lens length, if I have absolutely nothing selected under properties, I can change my lens length here. Uh, default is a 50 millimeter lens, which you know would work fine for this instance, but I like to usually use a shorter lens length, something around 32, 24, 34, maybe even 18. Um, I think it gives a better view of the model and is a little more aesthetically pleasing to the eye. So if I pick a view like this, I want to check that when I turn on my front group it's not outside of my view box so I can toggle that on and okay we're still good so I'm gonna be making line work hidden line work a section poche and dotted line work and a rendering and I want to make sure that all those things line up so I have to make sure that this view is consistent to do that I'm going to right click my name the model already has it renamed as three but really it's usually perspective I'm going to right click here, go to set view, named view, and I'm just going to create a new named view. So I'll save this view as P section. That's good and it's helpful because if I ever accidentally change my view, I can just come back and cl left click the down arrow, set view, go back to P section, snap right back. All right. So with this in place, I'm going to select all of my objects here. This has the front plane or the front group turned off and the plane turned off. I'll take all of this and I'm going to say make 2D. The make 2D command has lots of options in it, but what we're going to need is hidden lines and show viewport rectangle. It's really important that the viewport rectangle stays on. I'm going to put my, my lines will be on object lines and my hidden lines will be on uh, layer hidden. We're not going to have any hidden tangents and we're not going to have any hidden clipping planes, but those layers don't matter. Um, I don't have those layers currently made, but by typing these in, Rhino automatically makes those layers for me. So say OK. It'll take a second. The more complicated your model, the longer this will take. I'll go to my top view, and my Make 2D drawing is always based at 0, 0, 0, and then has the aspect ratio of my viewport, and then I have line work inside of it. I'm going to move it out of the way for now, um, and then let's see. You can jump. Uh, the hidden lines are white, but if we change them, we can change them to any color we want. I know that eventually they'll be black too. I can turn them on and off, and I have this line work in place. The next thing I'm going to do is come back to my perspective section. I'm going to select everything again and type section. A section gives me the section cut, and so I'm going to go to my top view here. I'm going to click one corner and drag along the section that I want here and you can see it's already selected all those lines for me. I'm going to hit enter and jump back to my P section view. I'm going to make sure that this is the same view by going to P section set view. You can see I still have all of these section lines selected um, because I haven't clicked anything they've remained constant. So I'm going to say make 2D of just those lines. I won't have any hidden lines so it won't make any. I'm only using lines here. I'll say OK. This, um, I want to move onto a new layer. I'm going to say new, and I'm going to call this my poche layer. I'm going to right click this layer and say change object layer. So now all of, those all of that line work is on my poche layer. I'm then going to jump into top view, and I'm going to try to align these. And to do that, I'm going to take my top left corner and match it up to my top left corner. You can see that they're a little off. So to fix that, I'm going to say scale, and I'll go from my top left corner to my perspective section corner and just match that, or sorry, this is the poche corner and I'm going to match it up to the line work corner. And now that I know, I know that for sure my line work is matched. One last line work to make and that is of the front group. So I'm going to take the front group, uh, I'm going to make sure that I'm in the exact same view, so left clicking the arrow, set view, P section, say make 2D, I don't want hidden line work this time. I still want my viewport rectangle, and I'm going to call this dotted. So in top view again, kind of same procedure. I'm going to move my dotted stuff so the corners a match, and then I'll just scale from this corner to that corner and drag it so it's to all the way to this corner. Now you can see I have my front line work there. While I'm in the line work, I'm going to turn off dotted, I'm going to turn off poche. And you can see that there's a few issues I want to address here. I have this random line floating out in space that I know I, I don't, don't really want. Um, this line doesn't really make any sense, but it'll be covered up in Pochet. 
Same thing for these lines, but I can delete them. Um, that's all I need to do there, but if I turn on my poche layer, um, let's turn off lines. This is my poche layer, and I have some weird things going on. I know I don't want this line. This is the water, so I can have a break there. That's good. Um, and I don't want this line. If I take this line and turn my points on, I can correct a problem that I had in the model um, where I didn't model in the bottom plane so I wouldn't be able to poche in this ground floor. So by just kind of stretching that line across or even simply deleting that line and drawing a new line, I can close that space off. And I also know that this base would extend, my poche would go all the way up, so I'm going to delete this line here. So that should fix all of my line work. Now I can take all of this, I'm going to zoom selected, and type export, and on my desktop I'm just going to make this uh, line work dot AI. Uh, these are my illustrator options, and I want to preserve a snapshot of my current view. You can also uh, export a model to a scale, but knowing that this doesn't actually have a true scale, it doesn't matter to me. I'm also going to export the viewport boundary. Sometimes this is helpful for aligning things in the future. So I'll say OK with that. Uh, and I'm going to jump over to Illustrator. File open. On my desktop, I have a file called line work. You can see that my line work is a little large. I don't even know what size. Uh, I'll do this really. If I go to File, Document, Setup, and Edit Artboard, uh, right now my artboard is just a custom size. Um, let's see, let's go to. Let's just do a tabloid, uh, and then we'll do perspective here. Uh, I'm going to scale up all of my line work. One nice thing from Rhino exporting is that under my layers, uh, that's my artboards, where's my layers? Looks like they're closed. Window, layers is open. Oh, it's over here on my other screen. Uh, all of my layers come in as Illustrator layers, so it's really helpful. Uh, I'm going to use, this is the scale tool double click it, I'm just going to say I want it to be 150% bigger. So now it's a little bit larger. And So what I'm going to do is turn off all my layers. Um, I'm going to turn on uh, my line work. I'll select all and I'm going to set my line work to a line weight. This is my line weight tool, the stroke tool of 0.5. I'm going to turn off lines and turn on hidden. Take all of this hidden line work, I'll say actually say all. I want it to be 0.1 I want a dashed line of two. Uh, that's my secret recipe for good hidden line work. I'll turn off hidden line work and I'll turn on my dotted line work. I'll select all of that. I'll say that I want my dotted line work to be 0.5. And this is how we make a dot in Illustrator. You can see we have different ways to cap a line segment. Right now it's set to round and corners are set to round. I'm going to set my dash size and just like before, right now we have a two dash, but if I set it to zero, it'll make a dash that has actually no length, but it will still have two capped ends, which is a dot. And I'll change my gap size to say something like six, which will put the dots far apart. Let's select all again, and maybe we'll make this three to make them a little closer. So there's my dotted line work. Turn that off, turn on my poche, and Oh, looks like I missed one. Oh, you know that line I drew was actually on this wrong layer. It's on crucible column. If I click that line, I can drag it up to my poche from you know this little uh, box here and drag it onto my poche layer. And then really, I can delete my crucible column layer. There's nothing on there. Uh, so I'm going to select everything that's inside my viewport, all of this stuff, and I'm going to hit K to make this a live paint group. Click it to make it live paint. Uh, I'm going to set my color, Oops. and I can live paint and just kind of color in the lines here. I'm also going to go and say I want a blue for the water, and I can put water in here and here, and I can turn everything back on. And now I have kind of this composite line work, uh, perspective section already working. What will help me make this even better is to do a quick rendering in V-Ray. So I'm going to go back to perspective section. I'm going to turn off my front group. I'm going to click my arrow again, set view, P section. I'm going to check my V-Ray rendering options. If you're not familiar with V-Ray, there's only one option we care about this time for this particular rendering, and that's under output. 
I want to make sure that my rendering is the exact same aspect ratio as my drawing. So I'm going to say override the output uh, viewport, sorry. I'm going to say get my aspect ratio, then I'll lock it, and I'll say give me a, a fairly nice size rendering. With that, I'll just click render. There's no materials, there's no lighting, there's nothing set up. Uh, one quick thing I forgot. I'm going to turn off glass. Uh, because I don't have materials applied, we won't see through the glass, and I think it will look nicer with the glass turned off. I'll render this. It should only just take a second. And it's finishing up. So you can see it's a very simple rendering. Most of it's just bright white. Um, I'm going to say save. And I'm going to save this as uh, rendering.png. A uh, PNG file doesn't have any background information, so this white stuff will actually become invisible. I'll save that. Jump back to Illustrator. I'm going to make a new layer here. I'm going to drag it all the way down to the bottom and go say file place. Uh, I think my thing was called rendering.png. I'll zoom out a little bit. I'm going to try to match it up to this corner and I'm going to drag my PNG so it matches that corner and now you can see that my rendering snaps right into place. If you ever got a rendering in here and it wasn't lined up, all you have to do is to take the corners and match it to our viewport rectangles. This is why we use the viewport rectangle right there. And You can see now the rendering is in the background. If I lock my layers, I can click that rendering and sometimes it's helpful to change the opacity. Let's set this down to maybe 65 percent just to make it a little softer and not as vivid. Uh, I'm gonna make sure, let's see, select my, lock my rendering, I'm gonna unlock everything else and I'm gonna just try to delete this edge border. There we go. Lock everything so I can't accidentally delete it or change it. And that's how you make an amazing composite section. Um, lots of different line work. Hopefully it helps explain your project a little better.